Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. And today we have a Training Sim World 3 video. And a uh, video with a bit of a difference today for you all. Um, this is in, well, you know, 25 years of playing rail simulators. This is my first ever time driving an American road freight. So let's have a look. I picked out a service at uh, 3 o'clock that I wanted to do. Uh, Intermodal, I'll pass out to somebody. Oh, that's the one. So I'm just going to have a quick look at it here and I'm just going to bring this with me and see how we get on. And I'm also going to do um, another couple of videos like this as well following this. My years of playing train simulator, I've always really stuck to multiple units, CMUs, DMUs, sort of 70 mile an hour to 100 mile an hour top speeds, stop start services. So, American Road Free, uh, Steam, and True High Speed are three things I haven't really drove on simulators yet. So. And there'll be the three videos I'll be doing. I'll be doing another video following this on my first drive in Steam and my first drive in a, a high speed. So I'll just bring this along and see what happens. Literally, first time jumping in, might as well stick the camera on it and see what happens. And sure, we all might get a bit of a laugh or I might actually do quite well one or the other. We'll find out. Right, so we're in the Jeevo. Only 39 car carriages, so this is a short one in comparison for this route. Um, a lot of the trains in this have 70 plus. Do, 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 do. It's all caught in anyway, so I'm good to go. And everything else, what else do we need? Banking. We need headlights on. Independent off, automatic off, dynamic off. Reverse into forward. And let's be having some of you. And independent off. Three locals on the front end. See what's on the back of it. So 
So, no locals on the back of it. And we got a DP mid -train. So, it appears to be just the three locals on the head end. No distributed power. Right, so. Up there, get going. So suppose um oh, we're getting out of the yard here and getting up to speed. One of the questions I expect to come into the comment section is why this from your first uh, this route from your first American road uh, freight and simply because what uh cone is and cone pass is um cone passes Anyone who has any knowledge of American uh, rail history will know a holds uh, a very large spot in American railroad in the history, and not for good reasons either. So, um, many of real life driver have failed the challenge of the past, so why not give it a shot? What was it, three runaways in the space of nine or eleven years was it down the pass? I think it, I actually think it was, it was correct, it was 91, 93 and 97 I think for the three years of the El Cajon Pass runaways. Go cool, on, Betsy. Get up there. Even for a short and try and she's struggling to gain speed up the grade and not chase her. It's not as if she's now get up and go. That's 13,000 horsepower on the front of that train, so <laughs> it has power. And even for just 30 coaches, it's some fucking length of train, like. You can only imagine what, I think the longest train on this, uh, this route is 92 wagons. So, that's 30 odd wagons you're seeing there, because you imagine the length of a 90 wagon train. So, that's going to be a challenge going up and down the home pass when we get to them length of trains. So, which I'm sure you will get to see me, uh, 
fuck up and lose control of once or twice <laughs> over um, the next coming months on this channel. <laughs> She's getting up to road speed now. Go on, Betty. So let's have a look around the Givo. So for those that don't know much about American locomotives the ES44 here that we're in there is a General Electric or GE product uh, known as the Evolution Series and the 44 stands for its rated horsepower of 4400 horsepower per logo um, so the name, obviously the name Gevo is coming from the Evolution series which Evo, but we all know there's a well known car brand that uses the name Evo, so General Electric named them Gevos. Look now there, Betsy. Going a bit over speed. The dynamic in the chef up there for a minute now. We're still losing speed on the coast, anyways. The back end of the train still coming uphill. Come on, Betsy, comes back down below the speed. bringing that down so although the line speed limit here is 55 miles an hour I am breaking the train down to below 30 and this is because the effective, the most effective range of your dynamic brakes when on a downhill gradient is between 10 and 30 mile an hour. Um, above 30 and below 10. Below 10 you generally will be requiring the, uh, depending on the weight behind your locos, but generally in general it will be the independent brake you'd be using to brake from 10 miles an hour. Um, above 10 or well, controlling the uh, trying on a gradient above 10 they would definitely be using dynamics and the, more, the higher obviously that speed goes more towards the 30 mile an hour and above um we'll start to need to bring in your automatic try and brake as well um so obviously be careful when you're using the automatic try and brakes because the automatic brakes aren't as responsive as the other two brakes and obviously have to recharge with air once you release them so if you release brakes on a hill just be careful so 
to drop the dynamic back out of setup. And give us a bit of back, a bit more power. Try and get back up around the 30 mark at least. And I'm back up hill, so. It's not a place I'd like to be stuck for very long, but it looks like quite deserty out there. So picking back the speed here, I'm not going to go too much more than sort of 35, 40, just. We want to be able to bring the train back down to speed once we get down the downgrade. So, as you can see there, not zoom out shot how actually short that train is compared to most trains on this uh, route. When you actually see a shot like that, especially uh, when you get to sec sections of around Corv track where you can actually look back and you still can't see the back of your train. Well, hey ho, at least we're driving BNS and F and not Norfolk Southern. We're safe from the knowledge that we might not jump off the rails today. And back onto the uphill gradients. As we go over the defect detectors. That's one thing I would actually love to see um, Dovetail Games introduced to this game. Is um, make the defect detectors active Dovetail. You're obviously, um, obviously with the game, there's no fighters in the game. So, you're not going to get a, a defect detector activation so it should be quite simple for Dovetail to be able to put in a recording that says defect detector no defects found that's as simple as the recording needs to be it's not going to tell you there's a defect on whatever axle and whether it's hot bearing or it's dragging equipment or it's quite simple as defect detector no defects found And obviously those of us in Europe would know um, defect detector more as a hotbox detector. We'd we'd rather we class it as over in, uh, in Europe. Obviously the length of services on the length of trains are a lot shorter, so there's a lot more and there's a lot more traffic around them. So there's a lot more eyes on each train during its trip in Europe. So. Um, Dragon equipment and things like that were never really something that caused a problem in Europe. That the main the main problem was obviously bearings and bearings overheating from lack of oil. So that's why you you find or now here in anywhere where I am in Ireland, um, you'll find mainly any defect detectors you find around are just mainly hot box detectors on their own. There's no no flaps that detect dragon equipment and other bits and pieces on there, defect detector. So, um, also, our hot boxes here is particularly in Ireland. Anyway, don't issue a radio message to the camp the way the American ones do. Um, if we're trying in Ireland, uh, sets off a hot box detector. That then the hot box alarm is sent to uh, CTC, Central Signal and Control, Central Train and Control Signal, and. Um, Basically, central train control then will give the, whatever effect the train a red signal. Um, we'll slow it down, obviously, through ambers down to reds, 
and that'll give um, kind of a, a voyage what happened recently in East Palestine with Norfolk Southern's um, derailment there in that that train got its defect detector warning and obviously as when you get a defect detector warning on American freight rails the uh, rules is to apply an emergency brake and come to a stop completely um, as quickly as possible. Um, the NTSB has stated in that, that derailment that part of the derailment was that emergency brake in action, in that the aggressive brakes in action of the emergency brakes was the final straw that snapped the axle on the the, the very first wagon to come off the, the, the line on that derailment. So, um, boy, the alert down to the signaller and then the signaller controlling the speed down through ambers down to red it gives a more gentle braking curve uh, to the train and in question and obviously will stop a overheated axle snapping under the extreme stresses of emergency braking so um, that's one of the reasons why it's done the way it is and I right know here in Ireland and, um, quite interesting though to learn how the different railways around the world operate and the differences in in them and America is obviously quite fascinating because it's celebrated as being one of the best freight rail networks in the world but yet all of the class ones seem to be in a major rush to ruin the whole rail network in America. Um, hauling up a lot of double track, as you can see here, like a lot of this track here is double track, but a lot of double track around America is being dug up. Um, it's been made single track with passing loops and it's all under the guise of precision scheduled railroad, which is not precise nor scheduled, so I don't know why it's called that. Um, but, um, yeah. By the way, this is the console version of the game as well. Um, just if anyone's wondering, um, PS4 variant of Transim World as well. One thing I'm noticing here, and I don't know, I suppose anyone that lives in the San Bernardino Valley that I, or has been in that region before, <coughs> that knows the area, um, I find it quite weird that you're going through a desert that seems ridiculously sparsely populated, yet the rails are quite separated. But then when you come into major American cities, and a lot of towns and rural towns in America, there's absolutely no grade separation between the rails and the roads. There's no, like, no fencing or nothing, like, 
protecting the rails like the rails are arc, arc ride level like exposed and then American Railroad people wonder why there's so many accidents and deaths on the American rails like that would not fly in Europe even here where this section of line is grade separated where it doesn't really need to be it would still have fencing on both sides of that line um, and simple as it is a crime to trespass anywhere on a railway line in Europe now don't get me wrong there unfortunately in Europe as well is fatalities on the line but um, those tend to be more from personal issues let's say from uh, with the people involved um, unfortunately in Europe uh, suicide by rail has become a unfortunately large problem um, I suppose that comes down to maybe things like your guns and the likes that aren't ex as easily accessible as they were in America or other countries and so but it is um, it's certainly an issue in Europe a lot lately is um, unfortunately suicide by rail As soon as you roll off the power back up a gradient again, of course. And um, obviously with this route as well, um, that I've picked the drive, or this service I've picked the drive, <coughs> um, doesn't actually go down the pass, doesn't go down Cajon Pass, I don't think anyway. I think Victor, Bar Barstow to Victorville, um, I think it's before the pass, I think it's Victorville into um, San Bernardino is the, is the actual Cajon Pass, so um, on this route we won't actually go down on this service we won't actually go down Cajon Pass so what I'll do is, is as well um, when I don't make my first run down the pass I will record that as well and put that on the first steam and first high speed uh, services I run as well as we go across the crossing. Well, one thing is actually noticing this video um, Eagle eyed and uh, uh, viewers that, that play the game will notice um, no safety systems. If anyone out there knows where to turn on PTC, 
or for non-Americans, PTC, the safety system, positive train control, um, would be say the equivalent to um, a combination of DSD and um, both DSD and AWS in the UK, or would be sort of similar to uh, PZB in Germany. But uh, PTC, positive train control. If anyone knows where to turn PTC on in both this, the uh, the G. ES44 and the uh, SD70 Ace as well. We do have that local as well, but don't know where to turn the PTC on on that one either. So, if you do know, please pop in the comments where to pop the PTC on. Bring it down for speed for a downhill and then you end up going back uphill, Danny. As you can see, I don't um don't know this route at all. See a ground trying pass off there.
If you can see what I mean by the length of American road flights there when you see the ground fan, as the end only passes a snout. Looks like we're coming up to a bit of a town here, so. I'm not sure I'd like to live in them little porta cabins out there. They don't look like in very inviting places to live. A couple of trailers there. Ten miles to Victorville.
queuing just for 30 cold, 30 wagons like that, the length of that train amazes me. We know here in Ireland on air, um, intermodal liners, uh, the maximum of 15 wagons, so the maximum train length we would have in Ireland would be half the length of that, the current train I'm driving here. And would generally have a maximum of two locos. Generally, most Irish freights are operated with one loco. And the American viewers will know well the, the locos used in Ireland. Um, the two current uh, serving locos for freight are, um, well, I suppose mixed traffic. They're both American locos geared for mixed traffic, but. Um, our uh, 071 class loco is a SD40 originally, so uh, the SD40 regaged for uh, Irish uh, 5 foot trains gauge and double capped, obviously all European uh, locos are double capped, cab each end, so um, yeah, the 071 class is an SD40 and the uh, 201 class is a F59 PHI. Uh, double capped and re-geared for mixed traffic rather than just passenger. Um, so it would be similar to Air 201 class, would be similar to the British class 66, which is the was built off the freight variant of the F59 uh, PHI as geared for heavy freight work only. Uh, the F59 itself is geared for passenger work only and the Irish Rail Class 201 is uh, geared for mixed traffic, so both freight and passenger weapons. And the same uh, for the 071 class as well, it's, it's geared for mixed traffic. Few more trailers off to our left as we go across another defect detector.
Just got an alpha signal in two miles. Looks like another train appearing off to the left over there as we pass by. So obviously it looks like some sort of grind mill or something over there than that uh, see some grind wagons just parked down the bottom of it. Siding. So here's some more grind wagons up ahead. Bring the speed down below 45 for the adverse signal ahead. This is one part of American railways that I don't really have a full grasp on what each signal means for each operator. Yeah, I don't know the basics of each operator have. Obviously clear, um, approach, medium approach, approach restricted, approach diverge and, and so on. But um, the problem is, is there's not one standard across the whole country um, in terms of signaling. Each different individual company uses their own different signaling. So when you compare that to say a European network like the UK or mainland Europe or Ireland, it's one standardized signal and across the whole country generally so so obviously getting approach control signals for the yard in Victorville it's 2.8 miles out now So we remember correctly, that flashing amber over red back there was an approach limited, so I should be below 30 mile an hour approaching the next signal. I should be ready to stop.
just got to keep coasting down the speed there. Just about a mile to go. And this is going to be either just a changeover spot on the side of the rail because I don't see any major yards approaching ahead although we are still a mile out or so so Seems to be a bit of a yard now, all right. It's a lot of fucking oil and petrol tankers.
Welcome to Victorville, California. So that's my first ever attempt at an American roll freight. Um, I hope you uh, enjoy this video and said I will put up another um, videos of be putting up other videos of my first um steam and my first um high speed drives and I'll also um be continuing on with what I started on the uh Trans World twenty twenty in uh doing the scenarios and putting them up for you to see. And uh, of course as per usual if you've anything else that you'd like to see, any other videos you'd like to see on the channel, um drop it into the comments and if i can i will and until next next time thanks for watching and bye bye